All right. So, um, yeah, I want to talk about why it's difficult to actually teach art. And um, so anyway, I'm just going to get right into it. And so we see that there's uh, a lot of people will be struggling with art. They go to school for it. They uh, want to get books and they have some people just have like a really, really tough time picking it up. Like a lot of times I, I run into people who've been studying art for a while and, you know, they come and they tell me, you know, it's like, you know, I've, I've done this and I've done that and I just can't seem to really grasp, um, you know, I, I just what, don't have that magic sauce. It's just not working out. So uh, I want to say that one of the biggest problems of um, art is that there's what I would call the fallacy of step-by-step -step learning. That people think that they can just take uh, tutorials, they can see how to draw eyes, or you know, there's that meme for how to draw owls, where you draw like you see one circle and then you see another circle, and then they say draw the rest of the fucking owl. So there's that that whole you know joke. And um, so here's the problem: is that it just doesn't work that way. It's like if you wanted to, let's say we're talking about a math test, right? You go to school, you go for a math test, and you're not very good at math. And so what you do is you just sit next to the guy who's really good at math and then you just look at his paper during the test and you cheat and you just copy the answers that, um, that he's writing down. And yeah, you might get the right answers because he's getting the right answers, but that's not how you learn how to do math, right? It doesn't make you, it only will help you pass the one test, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't pass you the, the, the test of the career, you know, the test. It doesn't, it doesn't help you pass the test of time. Um, when it comes to, to drawing. So when you see these tutorials on how to draw the owl where they tell you to draw, you know, this circle and that circle and you're just going step by step, your people, I see so many times people drawing characters and they just draw the head and they put like a cross on it and they think that that is enough, right? They think that if they just read the book and they do the things that the book says, they are essentially doing the same thing. They're just cribbing, you know, they're just cribbing the answers from the guy who's good at drawing. They're not they're not really becoming good at drawing. If you just draw circles and draw a cross on top of it, it doesn't make you good at drawing heads. So the thing is that drawing is, you know, people would say drawing is like learning a bike. And in that regard, I would say, yeah, it is because it's like, if you want to ride a bike, well, what do you do? How do you ride a bike? You get on the bike and then you put your ass on the seat, you put your feet on the pedals and you start pedaling, right? You just start pushing the pedals. And of course, everyone knows that if you know you just do that, right? And you're not if you're not good at a bike, you get a beginner to just sit on a bike, he's gonna fall over, right? <laughs> so bike, the bike, there's there's like this kind of a sense of balance, and there's all these other weird things that have to go on, things that you have to coordinate before it actually starts to work. And this is the problem with drawing is drawing is one of these things that relies largely. We're not gonna be doing any drawing, by the way, just just so you know, in case you're like waiting, staring at the screen, so you can just put this audio only. Um, so you know the thing with the drawing, uh, you know, it's the same thing. Right, is that you, you just looking at tutorials the same thing as just telling someone to just put their ass on the seat, stick their feet on the pedals, start start pushing. Um, you it, it just doesn't work that way. It's the same thing with like math, right? It's like some of the step by step, you know, you can learn some of the fundamentals, but it's like until you really understand what's going on under the hood, you know, and you have this like really, really deep understanding, you, you know, you don't just become good at math just by memorizing um, the quadratic formula and all these four like that's not making you good at math. You'd be surprised. I think what really makes you good at math is when you understand how math is about the manipulation of quantities. And when you do a lot of problem solving, you start understanding that all of these functions and all of these different operands are there as a way of forming and changing the values and, and understanding how those values change. Under, if you've ever seen like a graphing calculator and you see how the curve changes, you start to understand the relationships between the numbers and the operands. Then you start to really understand the, the, the mathematics. You start to understand the purpose of the mathematics. You start to understand that a mathematical equation or the creation of a mathematical equation is like the creation of a machine, a machine that processes input values into desirable output values. It's a calculative you know, machine with all these operands and, and, and formulas inside working like, like, a, like, the, you know, like the intricate cogs and cog work of a machine. So... That's that. This is the difference, right? It is is that you can't just rely on tutorialization. You can't memorization is important, but it's not, you know, making you doesn't make you good at the thing. It, you can't just rely on it. 
So don't rely on, on tutorialization. Do not rely on rote memorization. Instead, what you need to do is you need to become, I, I, I call it, you just become strong. So becoming strong is like, well, okay, look, someone can teach you how to lift weights, okay, but it does not make you able to lift weights. I mean, you can learn some of the proper techniques for lifting so you don't throw your back out, and you, know, you can find some ways to, to, to help get better leverage over lifting the weight, but it doesn't build the muscles. It doesn't make you strong. And you, so that's what I mean by why you have to become strong. So one of these examples of, of strength in drawing. So you have to be, have, have strong draftsmanship skills. Or, or, so look, some of the, the things that I have in terms of being strong are just being able to say, make the lines go where I want them to, to be able to draw a circle, just right? I can draw and draw two points and I can connect those two dots very easily, right? Like I have ways of working where I'm very, very strong in terms of my raw plotting skills. Now, if you've ever seen in the, in the olden days, all right, the 80s, maybe the 90s, I'd say more in the 80s, they used to have these things, these AutoCAD driven printer plotters. There were these XY axis driven printers. They held a marker and they would, they would actually, you know, move around and they would create your drawings. They didn't just scan line, go top to bottom. Um, they, they would be printer plotters. So my arm, okay, one of the first things that I've, one of the first things I learned was how to train my arm into something kind of like a printer plotter. So now I've, I have these, this really, really good, strong draftsmanship plotting skill where I can create the lines and I've trained my mind and I've trained my arm, you know, via various exercises, the repetition of various exercises, and I've gotten myself very comfortable and I'm just a really, I have extremely strong plotting skills, which means that having the, sh the strength of plotting, you know, allows me to arbitrarily go around and then create forms. Oops, I'm going to shift that upwards because I didn't apply my compositional skills. All right, now I'm going to draw the head, which is going to fit into here. And now it's like, I am not using any, you know, any lines. I'm not drawing any like cross over this head. I'm free form going at this thing and doing it kind of like a wire wrap. So this is like a wire wrap extrusion um, model. And I can just go through. There's no, you know, it's, it's kind of like formless. Meaning I, I don't have to, to just go over this step by step by step by step by step process. I can just offload everything to my subconscious and just let the line you know, doodle around and go wherever I want it to go. I've got strong plotting skills. I've got strong perspective and depth sense. Okay, and you can't learn that kind of stuff through the, here's how to draw eyes. First you draw a circle, then you draw. You're not building the, the right muscles. You're not strong. Now, another thing uh, about drawing that makes it very, very difficult to teach is, um, well, you can't just learn one thing. Right? A lot of people, I, I get it, you, know, you want to be, be as good at drawing as fast as you possibly can. You're looking, you know, you're looking to be able to draw, you, know, you, you may have seen some really nice artwork, you know, something that maybe Blizzard has done or, or you know, it's stuff that you've seen um, from, from these various companies. And you want to be able to draw on their level, right? You've seen some of their promo art, some of their promotional artwork, and you want to be able to draw on their level. And you've seen some of the stuff on ArtStation and... And you want to be able to draw pretty drawings right away as soon as possible. And you're like, why do I have to go through all these freaking steps? And I just want to be able to pick up a pen and go at it, right? And um, you, just, you, know, you just can't just learn the one thing. Why do I have to learn all these stupid fundamentals and drawing boxes and blah, 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 right? It's like all this stuff is just in my way. It's not the, the cool stuff, right? So, I mean, we've got, this, this is a problem of priorities, right? Is that we have things where it's like, you, know, you have to learn these things and you don't know why you want to learn these things. And... And yeah, I, you know, look, I, even if, even if people tell you, you know, even if really good artists or other, you know, even if you're better, people who are better than you start telling you, Hey, you know, you got to slow down. You got to learn these other things, right? It, it's not going to change your priorities at the subconscious level, because even if you agree with me right here and now consciously and you say, yeah, okay, I agree with you, Mark. I've watched your videos for a really, really long time. And I really, you know, like it just, it doesn't make you subconsciously, you can't subconsciously, you can't will yourself into the subconscious agreement. Um, it's the priorities. So the problem is that, you know, my priorities are not really your priorities. And, you know, I, 
the thing is, is that I, I talked about how in math you have that, that kind of learning of the equations and there's this kind of intricate cog work and you have to understand the math that goes on. You've got to be able to, you know, you, there's all these like little things, right? So it's like, I said that, that, that the drawing, right, is like the riding of, of the bike. You can't just have one, you can't just have really strong legs. <laughs> you actually have to have a pretty good strong like core, torso. You have to have, you know, good abs. You've got to have a bunch of other things, right? Like all these other muscles, you have to develop your whole body to be able to be good at cycling. Right? You can't just rely, you can't just develop the one thing and then suddenly, suddenly start, you know, mountain biking. You'll get killed. Um, and, well, in the case of drawing, you don't get killed, you, but, you know, whatever hot, cute, you know, little waifu that you wanted to draw winds up looking like she went through a teleporter accident and the, the, the result is rather traumatic. So, you know, this is, this is the problem, is, is that you, you know, having, having to learn these priorities and, and uh, having to deal with systems. Okay, so this is another thing I want to talk about, is that why you, the reason you can't just learn everything is because everything is, is based, in drawing, is based on interdependent, inter, interdependent systems. Interdependent systems. So, de well, the word dependent means you need A to get B done, right? It's like the car will not run without gas. Let's look at a car. A car is a great example of a of this wonderful machine that that you know that relies on interdependent systems. It consists of interdependent systems. Just like drawing, being good at drawing is you are you want to have the machine of interdependent systems that is good at creating cute anime waifus. And so we look at a car, right? It's like if you want to be able to to have a car, you can't just it doesn't just have four wheels. You can't just stick a frame and put four wheels on the damn thing and then expect that to be a car, right? It's not going to take you anywhere. It's not going to really go for any off-road action. It's not going to win any Formula One races. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not even going to freaking leave the garage, right? Yeah, like, how are you going to get anywhere in a car without a fuel injector? The car doesn't have a fuel injector. Maybe it doesn't have... Okay, maybe you can run a car without an AC. It's going to get kind of hot in the summer, though. Um, you know, but you can't run without an engine. You can't run, the, run without spark plugs. You can't run without, without you know, one... If You can't take... You can't run without cylinders. You can't run without a fan. <laughs> Try running a car without with a, without a radiator. Um, drawing is largely going to be a marathon, right? And if you want to get the the better you are at drawing, the more of these subsystems you have, the further you can push your drawing. The better you can, you can make your drawing. And so, at every possibility, you know, every every possible turn, um, if there is a subsystem you could possibly that you could acquire that might be you know kind of useful to you. You know, because it's dangerous out there. It's dangerous out there. You know, take this with, you know, bring, <laughs> it's dangerous out there. Take this, right? You know that. So that's how you need to approach um, the acquisition of drawing systems. Plotting is one of those drawing systems. The sense of perspective is another one of those drawing systems. There's lots and lots of these little drawing systems that you can come to acquire. And, you know the sense of perspective. These are all different subsystems which which support one another that you that you need, and um, and this is why you should make them a priority. This is why they're 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 part of the priority because all of the really really nice artwork that you see out there that that's you know part of the Blizzard promo art and and uh, you know some of the artwork from say District Nine and and uh, you know all the the artwork that's using the really cute you know, anime waifu an manga and all that. So like, look, it's all using this fundamental stuff, right? This, the fundamentals are the subsystems, all the fundamentals that you need to learn. So, and, and it means that the, the, the sad reality of it is it's just, you're not going to be really able to make the things, the artwork that you have in mind. Okay. This is the problem. You've seen the nice artwork. You've seen the nice artwork that other artists makes. That's, the, that's what you have in mind. You want to be, that's where you want to be. And where you're at is like kind of like way lower. It's, there's this tremendous gap between where you want to be and where you are. And I know my camera and my audio are out of sync. Um, and it's like, it's just that, that is that, that pain of the gap. That pain is too much for a lot of people to bear. They want to be really good at drawing right away. Uh, it's, it's, you know, and sometimes they, they give up or they, they um they as a result they don't they don't spend the time sitting down and making themselves strong. So it means that you need to change what you want. You need to be able to um to enjoy becoming stronger than you were. 
I think what you need to seek is measurable improvement and always seek to become better than you are right now. And, uh, you know, like I know it, it's going to take some tremendous sacrifice. It's, uh, it's, this kind of, it's this kind of investment where you just, you're giving up something in the now for a payback in the future. All right. So here's, here's the great mind fuck. Okay. It's like, we always see these great, like, you know, back to the future, you know, movies and stuff where they always have this, this, this machine that you step into the machine and it takes you back into the past and you get to change the past. And, and guess what? What if you in the right now, here's the great fucking, here's the mind fuck. What if you're in the past right now? Okay. So you don't have the, 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 you don't have the big zoom out, okay? You can't see everything, right? So this is what philosophy is for. Philosophy is zooming out. It's being able to, to, to pull back and see the, the bigger picture. And so I'm going to you know, pull back, help you pull back and see that bigger picture and tell you that you are in the past right now. You can change your future right now, right? You're going to be, you're going to be that next, you're going to be you know, your future self in just a few short days you know, or a few years or whatever. And, and Whatever you do in the now is something, is a gift you give to yourself in the future. You are going to appreciate that gift in the future, right? It's like everything that you're, let me put it this way. Everything that, you know, that you don't do right now, every, every possible measure that you don't do to make yourself strong, right? You're going to give yourself a strong body in the future, but every, every opportunity that you pass up right now to give yourself a stronger self in the future is going to be a thing that you regret. You're going to come to regret. It. And so there's that, right? Is that if, on the other hand, everything that you do in the now, every opportunity you take right now to make yourself a stronger artist in the future, you know, later on, you're going to be like, oh man, I, it's like, thank goodness for that, man. If only, if, if I knew that it was going to be this good, I would have worked even harder. So that's, that's my way of putting it. In fact, you can, you can look at yourself right now as the product of, of the past. You are in the future right now. You are seeing yourself. Yeah, that's right. You're in the future of your past self. So here's the other mind fuck. So the mind fuck works both ways. And you are right now in, in the, the future of your past. And look at yourself as the artist that you wish you were, man. You're just not a very good artist. You've tried this stuff. You're not very good. You know, hey, that's on you, buddy you might have skipped out on your fundamentals. You probably didn't you know, work as hard as you could. You are as bad an artist as you are right now because you gave yourself a shitty yourself. You gave yourself the, you, you, you skipped leg day. You skipped out on what could have made you a better artist. You know, all the stuff in chapter, you know, in the early chapters of the, of the books, all the fundamentals you never took seriously, that is why you are the artist that you are right now. So that's another way to look at it is that you are currently in the future. So you are both in the past of your future self and you're in the future of your past self. And uh, this, is, this, is the, this is the point of a sacrifice, right? The sacrifice is not, just, is not just throwing money at a thing to see it go into a black hole and you get nothing in it for return. This is a sacrifice in that right now, the only person who pays for the sacrifice is the you right now. And right now, you are paying for the sacrifices you didn't make yesterday, for the sacrifices you didn't make in the past. So that's, that's the way to, to look at the, this grand old weird thing that is time. Now, some people would ask, you know, do, you have, do I have what it takes to be a great artist? And, you know, do I have... And, and, and I would say, well, what it takes. Let's rephrase... Do you have what it takes? What it takes is what you need. So don't think, do I have what it takes? You just ask yourself, do I have what I need to be the artist that I want? And I'll tell you right now, you know, all the things that you need is you need to, you need, you need to be strong. You need to be strong in many different ways. You need to be strong at, with your plotting skills, you need to be strong with that, that sense of depth and perspective. You got to be able to look at the page and, and push into the page and sink lines into the canvas. You have to be able to defeat the problem that when you look at a flat piece of paper, it looks flat to you. Right? There's all these little things which I pointed out in some of my previous tutorials, and I'll probably go, uh, go over those in, in later tutorials. But this 
this is this is the thing is that when you say do you have what it takes or do you have what you need well guess what i got a bad i got bad news for you you don't have what you need okay that's the whole point of of learning that's the whole point of doing exercises is to get what you need we all start out we don't have none of us have what it takes none of us is squirted out of that that you know squirted out of the, out of the loins it, it, with with what we need we don't have what we need that's why we practice that's why we why we undertake the fundamentals sorry we're already we start out behind the eight ball we don't have what we need that's why you need to become stronger you need to be a strong artist you need to be a, you know strong at plotting you need to be strong at all these different things you need to be strong at problem solving you need to be strong at, at analysis at, at you know three-dimensional analysis um, and, and the breakdown and being able to understand what is design and being able to understand all these different things to be able to, to get all of the systems all of the systems that this machine all the you know depend upon all of the systems that you that the drawing machine you want if you want to be a good artist that means that you you essentially want to be a good drawing machine a machine that produces great drawing just like you could be a great a, an assembly that produces great cars um you that's that's what you need that's what it means to have what it takes is to have what you need and so i guess the thing that you need to get what you need then maybe that's maybe that's that would be the bigger question right? do you have what you need to acquire what you need to be a better artist so that's another thing about philosophy right so it's, but the great pullback right so so having so so that said well it, it is going to take a lot of time and that means that you're not going to get good at drawing just by doing finished art pieces um where it's like you just do one p one piece a day you know you do one full body pose with like coloring and lines and and all that stuff you try and make it look all finished and polished like like some piece of promo art um you know once a week because you're just too scattered all right you have to understand that trying to get better at drawing you have to get it's like it's like working with a magnifying glass to burn something okay so let's say you have a great big sheet of, of of paper of like you know black paper and you have a little teeny magnifying glass okay little tiny magnifying glass so that magnifying glass is your capability for learning all right and so you can't learn a whole lot of things at once but if you are slow and methodical and dedicated and you have the time you put in the time to take that magnifying glass and focus that little tiny patch of sunshine that little one inch circle of sunshine into a tiny pinprick of light and you start burning away that piece of paper and you start working in a scanline fashion top to bottom you know very slowly you burn off an edge and you burn off another edge and yeah it's going to be slow this is why patience is is necessary right because only with patience do you make any progress you need that patience you need that devotion it's it's you know like it's anybody else in their right mind okay would lose their mind having to do this kind of thing all right so i mean you have to be borderline autistic you have to be like i swear you got to have some kind of fucking disorder to get good at to be able to get good at drawing it means that you just got to sit there and gradually burn away at the paper and just be glad to see that on the great progress indicator of becoming a good artist that you're seeing 0.01%, 0.02%, 0.03%. But guess what? That is infinitely better than sitting at 0% for the rest of your goddamn life, okay? Yes, it takes time. You focus that little ray of that little, that little patch of sunshine into a little teeny point and you slowly work your way. That's how it's made. That's how it's done. That's how the learning is. It's, um, so if you, ha so, if you have what it takes to get what it need, what you need, it means that you need to have some serious time. You need to put away. You need to set aside some time. You need to, and and it not it's not necessarily going to be giant chunks of time. You know, like some sometimes people think it's going to always take giant chunks of time. But I say, use every piece of time you can. Uh, if you are someone who travels on the bus, 
a lot, you know, takes public transit, that kind of thing. You know, you, you ever have to take a, take a crap? You got to take a shit? Okay. If you have time to take a shit, you have time to draw. If you have time to ride the bus, you have time to draw. Anything like that, right? Any of these, these hunks of time, if you can carry a sketchbook with you, you know, if your family's banging on the door to get in there, you know, fucking, what are you, what, what are you taking so long in the shitter? Well, I'm, I'm getting better at drawing. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> you just, you're, you know, if, if you are having difficulty falling asleep, fine, turn on the light, get your sketchbook out and start drilling exercises. A drill of an exercise is where you are methodically drilling away and focusing like the, the magnifying glass. You're drilling away on it repetitively on a thing to get better at that one thing. And you drill an exercise until you're exhausted and you fall asleep. Okay, so, so if you are having difficulty falling asleep at night, do your drills. Do your goddamn drills until it knocks you out. And then, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you're just kind of like kind of groggy and you need to wake up, do some more goddamn drills. Uh, that's, that's how I got better at drawing is I, I, did, I, I devoted a lot of time to this stuff, right? So that is what you need. You need to be able to, you need to, to be able to find, you know, be opportunistic about learning and be really just, just be obsessed. You got to be obsessed with this stuff. You got to have this, like, like I said, you got to have some kind of fucking mental disorder to maintain that kind of obsessive focus. And if you, there are a lot of distractions at your house, lots of video games, get the fuck out of the house. You're not going to get anything done. If you're, if you're in a place, okay, you've got to have the spidey sense for when you are in a place where you are not getting things done and get out of that fucking place, bring your sketchbook, go to, a, go to some cafe, go to a park bench, go to some place with no distractions where you have nothing else to do. You are now in a captive environment. You got nothing to do but get better at drawing. Put yourself on a fucking deserted island for all I care. All right? I do not take responsibility for people who starve out in the wilderness or get attacked by bears. But the thing is, my point is that that get get yourself, get thyself to surroundings where you can get better at drawing. Go to a church if you have to. You know, go to a church when they're off when they're off their their um when you know when they're not having their services. Just go you know go in there. It's nice and quiet. It's it's relaxed, and you can find a Find a find a, a bench to sit, in, uh, or you know, go to a coffee shop and find a, a comfortable place. I don't know. Find find some place. Do something about it. All right. So the thing is that if you don't you don't get better drawing without doing something about it, and and it's not going to be you're not going to get better just trying to draw, trying to to watch every single video of Feng Zhu, you know, ser like they're really good videos, okay. But you're not going to get good just sitting there watching tutorials all day. You get better at drawing by, by, by doing this stuff and, and by, you know, really setting aside the time and by, like I say, you know, kind of do the drills. So, hope that helps. Anyway, I'll see if I can fix this video synchronization issue with uh, OBS and I'll, um, well, I guess uh, that's all for now. Peace out.